I feel like we gotta try to go three for three. The fall birding season can be incredibly exciting. After a summer of heat, bugs, and not much rare bird movement, a cool weather fall chase can be just the thing you need to get out of that summer slump. This was the case when a Clark's Nutcracker was reported in Dane County, Wisconsin. At the time, I thought I would just be going out to find this one bird, but it turned out that there were a few other rarities nearby that I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to see. Wasn't really planning on going anywhere this weekend, but a Clark's Nutcracker got reported in Dane County. So we're going to take the morning to go see if we can try to find that. They are very quirky, very personable, very friendly birds. Uh, so I'm excited to see it in my home state. I've seen them out west, which was incredible. And let's see if we can go get this thing. I arrived at the Nine Springs E-Way, where the Clarks was being reported, and immediately saw it from the parking lot. I moved down to the trail and joined the other birders already on the scene, enjoying views of the feeding Clarks Nutcracker. The Clark's Nutcracker is a fascinating gray, black, and white corvid, normally found in high elevation areas of western North America. They have specialized thin bills for pulling seeds out of cones to cash and eat. Over time, the Clark's Nutcracker and the western pines have formed such a close relationship that characteristics of pine trees have changed due to their dependence on the Clark's Nutcracker dispersing their seeds. However, in Wisconsin, this bird seemed to have a knack for catching and eating large grasshoppers. Clark's nutcrackers nest in trees and can begin nesting as soon as January due to how much food they usually store. In my experiences, Clark's nutcrackers are either very elusive, only flying over you from tree to tree, or very tame. This particular bird fell into the tame category and didn't seem concerned with the paparazzi that showed up to watch it. Got the Clarks. I saw it as soon as I pulled in the parking lot. It was sitting up in one of the trees. Uh, went down, a bunch of other birders showed up. It was eating like a big bug. So that was, it's good to know that it's finding like food to eat here. And then it flew down on the path to hunt, kind of walked around and that's when I headed back up here. So that was really neat. There's also cedar waxwings making noise and goldfinches. And uh, it's beautiful in the fall color, like the drive up was really nice too. It's an awesome bird for Wisconsin. I headed back to the car and eyed up my next target bird for the day. Since we had such great views of the Clarks out west, I didn't stay here too long and I'm gonna head to Stricker's Pond where there's been a black-bellied whistling duck. So we'll see if we can pick that up while we're in the area. And already a great day so far. With the excitement of seeing the Clarks spurring me on, I arrived at Stricker's Pond with optimism. Just got Stricker's Pond. There's a great blue heron fishing and definitely some waterfall out there. So we're gonna walk down and see if we can find the duck. I walked down the path and saw several other birders already looking at the whistling duck, which appeared to be resting. The black-bellied whistling duck is a loud, lanky bird, often seen in large groups in parts of the southern United States, Central, and South America. Adults have a reddish bill, pink legs, a tan head, brown body, black wings, and a white wing patch. Where they breed, they will take up residence in nest boxes or tree cavities. Whistling ducks used to be known as tree ducks, which summarizes the activities of the black-bellied whistling duck quite well, as they can often be seen perched in trees or on logs or branches near shore. They feed mostly on plant material, including aquatic plants and crops from fields. Keep an eye out for these birds in calmer areas with water, including locations out of their usual range, as they seem to have an expanding population. With the whistling duck chase a quick success, I decided I would test my luck and try for the third rare bird that had also been hanging out in the area. Well, that was really quick and pretty easy. Uh, the whistling duck was just sleeping. There was the great blue heron hunting was pretty neat. But we're gonna try to go for like what people today that I've seen are calling the trifecta and try to get the Rufus hummingbird too. I've seen a bunch this year. I've seen them in Wisconsin before, but I feel like we gotta try to go three for three. So let's see if we can get that one too. I arrived at Governor Nelson State Park, where birders had said the Rufus Hummingbird was making trips to the feeder about every 15 minutes. So I'm now at Governor Nelson State Park, and there's a bit of a crowd here waiting for the Rufus Hummingbird to show up. Apparently it comes to the feeder 
and then goes and perches up in this nice orange tree on one of the bare branches. So it was here earlier, apparently it comes about every 15 minutes, we'll see if that holds true, but just kind of a waiting game right now. After almost one hour and 45 minutes of waiting, the Rufus Hummingbird finally came to the feeder. The Rufus Hummingbird acts like a miniature fighter jet, zooming around from flower to flower or feeder to feeder, not afraid to chase off other hummingbirds. Adult males have namesake Rufus over most of their body, with hints of green and a light patch on their chest. Females and immature birds are similarly colored, but more drab. The summer range of the Rufus Hummingbird normally includes parts of northwestern North America, and they winter in Central America. During the breeding season, their tiny nests are made on tree limbs, out of plant material and spider web, and are only about two inches across. The diet of the Rufus Hummingbird includes nectar from flowers, or sugar water from hummingbird feeders, and insects. Seemingly, these birds have incredible memories, and Rufus Hummingbirds have been known to return to the same feeder locations year after year. That was a much longer stakeout than I was anticipating, but it did come in, and everybody got good looks, so I was hanging out at the feeder, going up in the tree, and it was neat to see the orange of the bird, and then like kind of the orange of the surrounding trees as well. So got the trifecta, excited about that. Three awesome birds, Clark's Nutcracker, crazy, black-bellied whistling duck, and then the Rufus Hummingbird, so great time out here in Dane County. After initially only chasing the Clark's Nutcracker, I had a great time completing my fall Dane County trifecta, checking off the Clark's Nutcracker, black-bellied whistling duck, and Rufus Hummingbird. Have you seen any of these species before? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.